In this video, I want to talk about how we can actually calculate the partial effect of a change in a particular explanatory variable on a dependent variable when the dependent variable itself represents a probability. So using the example which we used in the last few videos, we have that the probability that an individual goes to college, so the probability that college equals one, given that we had the log of their parental wage, was equal to some nonlinear function of alpha plus beta times the log of their parental wage. And we spoke about the two particular examples of f, one being the case of the probit model, whereby f is actually capital phi, where capital phi represents the normal CDF. And we also spoke about the case of the logistic model, where here f is represented by the logistic transform. Okay, so this video is going to be about essentially how do we calculate the impact of a one unit change in the log of parental wage. And we're going to explain why it's not necessarily equal to beta. Okay, so let's see why this is. So if we imagine the change in probability associated with a one unit change in the log of parental wage, then we can find that quite easily. All we need to do is we take off the original value from the value of f when log of parental wage has been incremented by one unit. So we have a function of alpha plus beta times log of parental wage, and then we're going to get plus 1 times log of parental wage, which is just log of parental wage. And then we're going to take off the function of alpha plus beta times the log of parental wage. And note that due to the nonlinear property of f, this difference in probability is not in general going to be equal to beta. And that is why we can't necessarily just observe beta and alpha and interpret them as we did in the linear probability model. They have a more complex meaning in the case of a nonlinear model. Okay, so how do we actually calculate the increment of improbability of a one unit change in an independent variable? Well, we could do it by this particular method here. So this would be essentially just saying, well, if we were to sort of move one unit to the right along that particular independent variable, in this case, log of parental wage, what would happen to the probability? But sometimes we're interested more in the sort of at that particular point, what is the slope of this particular curve or what is the sort of point way in which probability changes with a one unit change in that particular variable? And when you're talking about point changes, that's generally when you talk about differentials. So here, what we're actually going to do is we're going to differentiate this above relationship with respect to the log of the parental wage. And if we do that, we get out a value of the sort of differential of whatever this function is. And so it's the differential of alpha plus beta times the log of parental wage where this particular apostrophe here is indicating that I've differentiated it. But due to the chain rule, we're also going to get an extra beta because when I differentiate this stuff inside the parenthesis here with respect to the log of parental wage, we just get a beta out. And actually, just to make this thing look a little bit simpler, I'm just going to write this as beta times small f of alpha plus beta times the log of parental wage, where small f here indicates it's the differential or the first differential of capital F. Okay, so what is the effect of a one unit change in the log of parental wage? Well, it changes, right? It depends on beta, as it did before, but we've also got it as being a function of alpha plus beta times the log of parental wage. So it actually depends also on the log of parental wage. It depends whether you're talking about small incomes or higher incomes. It, the, the effect of a one unit change in that variable varies in terms of its effect on probability. And why is that? Well, it becomes clear if you draw a graph of the function f. So in both cases, talking about both the logit and the probit model, we hypothesized that our f should look perhaps something like this, because we wanted our value of f to be zero when it, f went to, well, x went to minus infinity and one when x went to plus infinity. So perhaps it looks something like this. 
And essentially what we're doing here is we're looking at the slope of this graph. And when income is very, very small, so we're somewhere like this, the slope of the graph is very, very small. In practice, it's very, very close to zero. So an increment of one unit of log of parental wage has not very much effect on the probability that an individual goes to school when the level of log parental wages are very small. Similarly, when parental wages are really high, there's also not much incremental effect on probability from one, a one unit change in the log of parental wages. And you can sort of think about once you reach a certain level of wage, perhaps these changes really don't matter too much in terms of the chance that your kids go to, go to college. But when you're in a particular area, explicitly around the origin, or perhaps as I've drawn it here, because I haven't drawn it quite correctly, there is a region where the graph has its maximum slope. And when you're in this sort of region here, the probability is very susceptible to changes in log of parental wage. So in those circumstances, a one unit change in the log of parental wage can actually have a large effect on probability. And that also kind of makes sense, just as it did for the cases where wages are very small or when they're very high, because when you're in the sort of in-between region, you can sort of suppose that this is the region that might be most susceptible to, or the most susceptible families rather, to changes in wages.